Now we're ready to set up our equipment. Safe equipment setup begins here at the cylinder valve. First, inspect the valve carefully for damage, particularly the seat and the threads. And if there's any oil or grease on the valve or cylinder, don't use it. Inform the gas supplier immediately. Oil and grease in the presence of oxygen can burn violently. Before attaching the regulators, crack the cylinder valve. Just open it a bit, then close it again. This helps remove any loose dirt or dust that may be in the valve. And this is a good time to start developing a very important safety habit. Always stand to the side opposite the valve port every time you open the cylinder valve and make sure no one is standing in front of the valve port when you crack it. Here's a typical high pressure industrial regulator. It reduces the high cylinder pressure to a usable working pressure. Never attempt to use a cylinder without a proper pressure reducing regulator. It's important that the regulator be properly sized for the specific pressure and volume of the application. Before attaching the regulator to the cylinder, always give it a thorough visual inspection to make sure it's in good working condition. Pay particular attention to any damaged threads or seating surfaces, a dirty or missing filter, or the presence of oil or grease. If you find any of these things, don't use the regulator. Take it to a qualified repair facility for a complete inspection and cleaning. Regulator inlet connections are threaded differently, so the oxygen regulator can't be put on a gas cylinder or vice versa. You should never have to force the regulator nut to start the connection. And this is important. Never change the inlet connection. When attaching the regulators, make sure the wrench fits the nut properly. It's important to remember that specially designed regulators and inlet connections are required for cylinders with pressures in excess of 3,000 PSI. Be especially careful when pressurizing the regulator. On regulators with an adjusting screw such as this type, first release the tension by turning it counterclockwise till it turns freely. This places the high pressure seat of the regulator in a closed position. Always stand to one side of the regulator so the cylinder valve is between you and the regulator. Now slowly open the cylinder valve until maximum pressure is indicated on the high pressure gauge. Then open the oxygen valve completely. Most oxygen valves are designed to seal only in the fully closed and fully open positions. The fuel gas cylinder valve should be opened a maximum of one turn. Remember, if the cylinder valve has a key, leave the key on the valve. That way, the system can be shut down in a hurry if necessary. Welding hoses carry the gases from the regulators to the torch. Now, these hoses are new, so they're easy to inspect. If the hoses are cut, worn, or damaged, or have oil or grease on them, they should be repaired or replaced. Welding hoses are usually color-coded, red for fuel gas, green for oxygen. The fuel gas hose also has grade specifications. Be sure to consult current regulations to ensure the proper grade of hose is being used. The hose connections have different threads. Oxygen hoses have right-hand threads. Fuel gas hoses have left-hand threads. The V-groove on the outside of the fuel hose nut indicates that it has left-hand threads. Attach the hoses and tighten with a wrench. Now it's time to purge the hose lines. 
This procedure reduces the chance of any foreign material entering the torch. Set the regulator at three to five pounds of pressure and run the oxygen through the hose for a few seconds. New hoses which contain manufacturing residue or a hose that's been stored improperly might take a bit longer to clear. Now purge the fuel gas hose in the same manner. Always purge hoses in a well-ventilated area, away from people. And of course, always keep fuel gas and oxygen away from sparks or flame. Inspect the inlet connections in the torch carefully, paying particular attention to the threads and seating surfaces. Victor torch handles, like this one, have reverse flow check valves and flash arresters built into the valve bodies, so accessory safety devices are not necessary. If you're using a Victor torch without built-in check valves or flash arresters, or another brand, I strongly recommend installing accessory check valves and flashback arresters here at the torch. Remember that these devices may restrict flow to varying degrees, so always consult the manufacturer's flow performance data. Next, attach the hoses to the torch handle and tighten securely with a wrench. Welding nozzles come in a wide variety of types and sizes for different kinds of work be sure to select and use the proper size and type for the work to be done. Inspect the nozzle carefully before attaching it. Make sure there are two O-rings here on the cone end and make sure they're in good condition. If there are less than two or if they're damaged or worn, the nozzle won't seal properly and a leak here could cause an accident and injury. When attaching the nozzle to the torch, hand tighten only. Wrench tightening could damage the seating surface or the O-rings and cause a leak. Different size nozzles require different gas pressures and volumes. Again, you get that information from a tip chart. Proper oxygen and fuel gas pressure settings are very important so be sure to use the chart and provide adequate volume with proper pressure settings. For this welding nozzle, I'll set the oxygen and the fuel gas regulators at 5 PSI. Open the fuel gas valve for three to five seconds to purge the system and check the regulator to make sure the flowing pressure remains adequate. Close the fuel valve. Next, purge the oxygen side and check flowing oxygen pressure. If the pressure drops below the recommended setting, reset the regulator. At this point, it's a good idea to check the entire system for leaks. To do that, just turn off both cylinder valves and watch the gauges for a minute. If the gauge pressures remain where you set them before, the system is leak tight. As you open the cylinder valves, watch the gauge needle. Any movement of the needle indicates a possible leak. Check the system for loose connections. If you can't find the leak, do not use the torch. Have the system checked and repaired by a qualified technician. Before lighting the torch, make sure to put on goggles to protect your eyes from sparks, heat, and the intense light of the flame. It's also important to be dressed properly for the job you're doing. To light the torch, open the fuel valve about one-eighth turn and ignite the gas. Hold the striker away from the tip, not cupped over the end where it could restrict gas flow. When using acetylene, 
adjust the gas valve until the flame stops smoking. When the smoke and soot disappear, proper acetylene gas flow has been achieved. Now, open the oxygen valve until you get a bright neutral flame. This neutral flame is used for most oxyfuel procedures. If you're using a multi-flame or welding nozzle for an application and there's too much heat, don't adjust the gas pressure down to reduce the heat. Simply change to a smaller size nozzle. 